Welcome, curious minds, to a world of knowledge and discovery. We're thrilled to present to you our video dedicated to National Defense Research Committee. Enjoy! The National Defense Research Committee NDRC was an organization created to coordinate, supervise, and conduct scientific research on the problems underlying the development, production, and use of mechanisms and devices of warfare in the United States from June 27, 1940, until June 28, 1941. Most of its work was done with the strictest secrecy, and it began research of what would become some of the most important technology during World War II, including radar and atomic bomb. It was superseded by the Office of Scientific Research and Development in 1941, and reduced to merely an advisory organization until it was eventually terminated during 1947. Let's now zoom in on organization and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. The NDRC was created by an order of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on June 27, 1940. It was part of the Council of National Defense, which had been created during 1916 to coordinate industry and resources for national security purposes. Vannevar Bush, the director of the Carnegie Institution, had pressed for the creation of the NDRC because he had experienced during World War I the lack of cooperation between civilian scientists and the military. Bush managed to get a meeting with the president on June 12, 1940 and took a single sheet of paper describing the proposed agency. Roosevelt approved it in 10 minutes. Government officials then complained that Bush was attempting to increase his authority and to buy us their mic he later admitted he was. There were those who protested that the action of setting up NDRC was an end run, a grab by which a small company of scientists and engineers acting outside established channels, got hold of the authority and money for the program of developing new weapons. That, in fact, is exactly what it was. Bush 1970, page. In his June 15 letter which appointed Bush to the head of the committee, Roosevelt outlined that the NDRC was not meant to replace the research work done by the Army and Navy in their own laboratories or through industry contracts but rather to supplement this activity by extending the research base and enlisting the aid of the scientists who can effectively contribute to the more rapid improvement of important devices, and by study determine when new effort on new instrumentalities may be usefully employed. Quoted in Stuart 1948, p. 8. The NDRC was managed by eight members, one of which was the chairman and two of which were appointed automatically by virtue of their positions as president of the National Academy of Sciences and the Commissioner of Patents. One member was appointed by the Secretary of War and another by the Secretary of the Navy. The other four members were appointed without reference to other offices. The original eight members of the NDRC were Vannevar Bush, President of the Carnegie Institution Chairman, Rear Admiral Harold G. Bowen, Sr. Conway P. Co., Commissioner of Patents, Carl Compton, President of MIT, James B. Conant, President of Harvard University, Frank B. Jewett, President of the National Academy of Sciences and President of Bell Telephone Laboratories, Brigadier General George V. Strong, and Richard Celsius. Tomman, Professor of Physical Chemistry and Mathematical Physics at California Institute of Technology. Strong was succeeded by Brigadier General R. C. Moore on January 17, 1941. During its first meeting on July 2, the NDRC elected Tomman as its vice chairman and appointed Irvin Stewart as its secretary. The NDRC members met approximately once a month until September 1942 after which it met either weekly or bi-weekly until the end of the war with Germany, after which it met irregularly. In this section, we'll be deep diving into NDRC research, unraveling its complexities and uncovering valuable insights. Under the chairmanship of Bush, the NDRC created new laboratories, including the Radiation Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology which aided the development of radar, and the underwater sound laboratory at New London, Connecticut, which developed sonar. The former grew to be the largest single activity of the NDRC. 
in the year of its autonomous existence, the NDRC received approximately $6,500,000 out of a requested $10 million for research. The NDRC's most important project eventually became the Manhattan Project full-scale project to produce nuclear weapons by the United States. An advisory committee on uranium had been established to consider the feasibility of an atomic bomb as part of the National Bureau of Standards during 1939 as the result of the einstein schiller letter, but had not made significant progress. It was instructed in Roosevelt's June 15 letter to report to the NDRC and Bush, establishing the chain of command which would later result in the full-scale bomb project. During June 1940 Bush reorganized the Uranium Committee into a scientific body and eliminated military membership. No longer beholden to the military for funds, the NDRC had greater access to money for nuclear research. However, there was little impetus until the British MAUD Committee's findings were presented in 1941. Now, we shift our focus to creation of the OSRD a topic that deserves our attention. The increasing hostilities in Europe caused a desire to create a new organization which would supersede the NDRC and remedy some of the problems the NDRC was facing, in particular in converting scientific research into usable military technology development, increased liaison between the different parts of military and civilian research in different government agencies, and creating a system for funding military medicine. At Bush's insistence, Roosevelt issued Executive Order No. 8807 on June 28, 1941, which established the Office of Scientific Research and Development. The NDRC technically still existed after the creation of the OSRD, but its authority had been reduced from being able to actually fund research to becoming simply an advisory body to the OSRD. The NDRC ceased to exist officially after its last meeting on January 20, 1947. When it became the NDRC of the OSRD, the committee membership and structure was reorganized. The NDRC of the OSRD membership consisted of Conant Chairman, Tom and Vice Chairman, Adams, Compton, and Jewett, along with the Commission of Patents Co. until September 1945 and then Casper W. Eames, and the representatives of the Army and Navy which changed periodically. The Committee on Uranium was reorganized as the S-1 section and it stopped being part of NDRC jurisdiction during December 1941. With our foundation established, it's time to explore select NDRC projects and its relevance to our overarching theme. The NDRC funded research into hundreds of different projects at many different educational and industrial sites around the country. Some of the ones it is best remembered for include atomic bomb research would later become the Manhattan Project DUKW Amphibious Vehicle Project Pigeon Proximity Fuse Radar at the Radiation Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Without further ado, let's move on to the topic of NDRC research organization. The NDRX research organization changed constantly during its single year of autonomous existence. During early June 1941, shortly before it was superseded by the OSRD, its organization was as follows Division of Armor and Ordnance Richard Celsius, Tolman, Chairman, Charles Celsius, Lauritsen, Vice Chairman, Section B Structural Defense. Section H Investigations on Propulsion. Section South Terminal Ballistics. Section T Proximity Fuses for Shells. Section East Fuses and Guided Projectiles Division B Bombs, Fuels, Gases, Chemical Problems James B. Conant, Chairman. Synthetic Problems Roger Adams, Vice Chairman. Section A1 Explosives. Section A2 Synthetic Organics. Section A3 Detection of Persistent Agents. Section A4 Toxicity. Physical Chemical Problems W.K. Lewis, Vice Chairman. Section L1 Aerosols. Section L2 Protective Coatings. Section L3 Special and Organic Problems. Section L4 Nitrocellulose. Section L5 Paint Removers. Section L6 Higher Oxides. Section L7 Oxygen Storage. Section L8 Gas Drying. Section L9 Metallurgical Problems. 
Section L10 Exhaust Disposal. Section L11 Absorbents. Section L12 Oxygen for airplanes. Section L13 Hydraulic Fluids. Miscellaneous Chemical Problems. Section C1 Automotive Fuels, Special Problems. Section C2 Pyrotechnics. Section C3 Special Problems Division Celsius Communication and Transportation Frank B. Jewett, Chairman, Celsius. B. Jolliffe, Hartley Rowe, I.D. Booth, and J.T. Tate, Vice Chairman. Section C1 Communications. Section C2 Transportation. Section C3 Mechanical and Electrical Equipment. Section C4 Submarine Studies. Section C5 Sound Sources Division D Detection. Controls, Instruments Carl Compton, Chairman, Alfred L. Loomis, Vice Chairman. Section D1 Detection. Section D2 Controls. Section D3 Instruments. Section D4 Heat Radiation Division East Patents and Invention Conway Pico, Chairman. The Committee on Uranium, chaired by Lyman Briggs, reported directly to the Chairman of the NDRC and as such does not appear in the chart above. Following the reorganization of the NDRC in December 1942, it had the following divisions Division 1 Ballistics Research, L.H. Adams, Chief Division 2 Structural Defense and Often See Effects of Impact and Explosion, John East, Bashard, Chief East, Wright Wilson, Chief Division 3 Special Projectile Rocket Ordnance, John T. Tate, Chief, Frederick L. Hoved, Chief Division 4 Ordnance Accessories, Alex de Ellett, Chief Division 5 New Missiles, H.B. Richmond, Chief, Hugh H. Spencer, Chief Division 6 Subsurface Warfare, John T. Tate, Chief Division 7 Fire Control, Harold L. Hazen, Chief Division 8 Explosives, George B. Kistiakowski, Chief, Ralph A. Connor, Chief Division 9 Chemistry, Walter R. Kenner, Chief Division 10 Absbents and Aerosols, W. A. Noyes, Jr., Chief Division 11 Chemical Engineering, R. P. Russell, Chief, East. P. Stevenson, Chief, H. M. Chadwell, Chief Division 12 Transportation Development, Hartley Rowe, Chief Division 13 Electrical Communication, Celsius. B. Jolliffe, Chief, Hardin Pratt, Chief Division 14 Radar, Alfred L. Loomis, Chief Division 15 Radio Coordination, Celsius. G. Suits, Chief Division 16 Optics, George R. Harrison, Chief Division 17 Physics, Paul East. Tubstig, Chief, George R. Harrison, Chief Division 18 War Metallurgy, Clyde Williams, Chief Division 19 Miscellaneous Weapons, H. M. Chadwell, Chief Applied Mathematics Panel, Warren Weaver, Chief Applied Psychology Panel, W. South. Hunter, Chief, Charles W. Bray, Chief. I appreciate your time and I'm grateful for every like, comment, and share.